Okay, I am back with part two of Hanukkah. And we're going to get into the history of Hanukkah in this part. Um, and before we start with the history, we need to understand where this actually falls in in our Bible. It's actually between the Testaments. And there are books that never got canonized um, in our Old Testament. And there, there were books that were written that did not get approved for the Bible uh, and get canonized um, for the New Testament. And they're called the Apocrypha and the Pseudo Epigrapha. So there are books called the Maccabees. Actually, there's four of them. Um, and this is where they fall into. This is the, the time in between the intertestament period of time um, that the Maccabean period falls into. But it is a period of history. There, there was real history that happened. But the reason why the Maccabees was not approved or canonized for the Bible is it was felt that it was not inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's just, but it is good history and accurate history to know where Hanukkah actually derived from. Because as, as we noted in part one, Hanukkah, for the Feast of Dedication, for the Festival of Lights, uh, however, whichever version of the Bible you're using, actually, it is mentioned in, in John chapter 10, verses 22 and 23, that Jesus was there, um, and it was a winter festival known as dedication in most of the Bibles, except for the TLB, the, the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, actually does say Hanukkah. We have to take the history back pretty far. What happened was, um, uh, you know, Israel became under Syrian rule, and there was a part, uh, there was a time when the land of Israel was part of the Syrian Greek Empire, dominated by the Syrian rulers of the dynasty of the Seleucids, and I can never pronounce that right. It's S E L E U C I. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of history because I'm going to really fast forward it to, to the time period where Hanukkah was actually derived from. But just to take it back that far, yeah, this is what was going on. And, it, and, and they were under rule of the Syrian Greek Empire at the time. And there was a bunch of Antiochus rulers that had uh, been, been the rulers of the land at that time. Um, and they kept getting worse as time went on, which we're going to fast forward to the worst one that actually desecrated the temple. And we will talk about him in just a little bit. The other thing that was going on um, during this period of time is there was a group called the Hellenists. Now, these were idol worshiping uh, people. Um, the long and short of this, they were actually influenced by the Greeks that were worshiping a lot of idols. And there were there, there were some Jew, Jews that fell into the Hellenistic ways. They incorporated that into their way of life. So that was an issue that was going on as well. And then there was, of course, the group of, of people that were, were very faithful to the Torah and wanted to keep God's laws. So they were fighting against, against a whole bunch of things. So we're going to fast forward to the Syrian period. And the ruler at, at the time, um, the king of Syria, was from like 175 to 164 BC. And this was Antiochus Epiphanes. He was not a very nice guy at all. And again, he was the king of Syria, and he ruled from 175 to 164 BC. He was violently bitter against the Jews, and he made a serious attempt to exterminate the Jews and their religion. In 168 BC, he actually devastated the temple, and he sacrificed a pig on the altar that had been dedicated to God, and he erected an altar to Jupiter. Also, he prohibited temple worship. He forbade circumcision on the penalty of death. He sold thousands of, thousands of Jewish families into slavery. He destroyed all of the copies of scripture that could be found. And anyone found um, with possession of copies of scriptures were slaughtered, and including scrolls and manuscripts. And he resorted to every conceivable torture that you could imagine to force the Jews to denounce their religion. And the atrocities and persecutions of the Jews under this ruthless regime of Antiochus Epiphanes led to the revolt of the Jews, led by Judas Maccabeus and his brothers. And this revolt 
against the Syrians was one of the most daring feats in history, which leads us to the rededication of the temple and where Hanukkah came from. So Judas Maccabeus was one of the sons of, of Mattathias Maccabeus. So actually it can also be pronounced, it, it can also be um, pronounced as Mattathias, M-A-T-T-I-T-Y-A-H-U, or also it's, it's also found as Mattathias Maccabeus. He was actually a priest. He had five sons. And his five sons were Judas, Jonathan, Simon, John, and Eleazar. And actually, Judas was the one that was chosen to actually lead in this revolt. So Mattathias gathered a band of local Jews to revolt against the Syrian rule. Um, and again, I mentioned the five sons. And after Mattathias actually passed, his mantle did fall to Judas his son to lead the Jews and under Judas's leadership, the Jews won many heroic battles and a revolt of the Jews led by Judas Maccabeus and his brothers in 165 BC was the most historic. And this um, actually allowed the temple to be reconquered, purified and rededicated. And this was the origin of the feast of dedication. Today is known as Hanukkah or Hanukkah and is also known as the festival of lights. And after the success of that revolt and, and, and success of many battles um, from that period on to about 63 BC, the Jews enjoyed a period of independence and, and peace. Um, and this, is, this was called the Maccabean or the Asmonean or Hasmonean period. So I'm going to back up just a little bit here. We're going to talk about the Maccabees. Um, before his death, Mattathias called his sons together, urged them to continue to fight in defense of God's Torah. He asked them to follow the counsel of their brother Shimon the Wise. In waging war, he said, their leader should be Judah the, st the Strong. And Judah was called Maccabee, and it's a word composed of the initial letters of the four Hebrew words, Mi Kamoka Be'alim Hashem, and that means, who is like you, O God. Now, the evil Antiochus sent his general Apollonius to wipe out Judah and his followers, the Maccabees. Though greater in numbers and equipment than their adversaries, the Syrians were defeated by the Maccabees because they had God on their side. Antiochus sent out another expedition, which also was defeated, and he realized that only by sending a powerful army could he hope to defeat Judah and his brave fighting men. So an army consisting of more than 40,000 men swept the land under the leadership of two commanders, Nicanor, N-I-C-A-N-O-R, and Gurgiash, G-O-R-G-I-A-S-H. When Judah and his brothers heard of that, they exclaimed, let us fight into the death in defense of our souls and our temple. And the people were assembled in, in Mitzpah, where Samuel, the prophet of old, had offered prayers to God. And after a series of battles, the battles, the war was won. So the Maccabees returned to Jerusalem to liberate it. And they entered the temple and cleared it of all the idols. They had to clean it all up, of course, because, you know, the pig was desecrated by being sacrificed on the altar of God. So that had to be cleaned. Um, so they cleared it of idols that, that were placed there by the Syrian vandals. Judah and his followers built a new altar, which he dedicated on the 25th of the month of Kislev in the year 3622 or 139 BCE. Now, since the golden menorah had been stolen by the Syrians, the Maccabees now made one of cheaper metal. When they wanted to light it, they found only a small cruise of pure olive oil bearing the seal of the high priest Yochanan. And it was sufficient to light only for one day. But here's the miracle of it. The, by the miracle of God, it continued to burn for eight days till new oil was made available. So that miracle proved that God had again taken his people under his protection. In memory of this, our sages appointed these eight days for annual Thanksgiving and for lighting candles. So this is what Hanukkah is all about.
So that is the long and short of it. I'm not going to go into any more detail because there could be a lot more that, you know, we could actually talk about because there's food that's in, involved, like the latkes, the, the special, um, they look like little jelly donuts. Um, then there's the dreidels and then there's the Hanukkah songs and, there, you know, the, the family getting together for the eight days to, to light the candle on each successive night, as I mentioned. Now, that is very important. Um, and I am going to actually, I actually soon have to end this because I'm going to light my candle for the first night and um, actually get Hanukkah started here. <laughs> so um, there are three blessings that are actually read on the first night. Um, and, and then the first two are actually read on the successive nights when you light the candles. And the and actually, the English translations of the blessings are, Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the Hanukkah light. And then the second one is, Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who performed miracles for our forefathers in those days at this time. And the third one is, Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this occasion. So we light the menorah. And like I mentioned earlier, um, the tradition of the menorah dates back to the story of Exodus and, and where God commanded the children of Israel to light the menorah in the, in the portable temple in the wilderness, the tabernacle. And the flames of the seven-branch menorah um, were not to were, were to be the eternal flame, but they were not to be extinguished either. So in the story of, of Hanuk Hanukkah, which we had just talked about, um, Antiochus and the Syrian Greeks sought to extinguish the flames of Judaism by forbidding traditional Jewish practice and desecrating the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, literally, literally putting out the lights of Jewish worship. And actually, God was with um, Judas the Maccabees and and reconquering the temple and, and getting things back in order. Um, they had to be purified, rededicated the whole nine yards. Um, but this is to commemorate what happened and the history of that. So I'm going to ask uh, you to ponder on a question or two. Um, Hanukkah is a holiday of rededication, a festival celebrating the reestablishment of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem by the, Mac the Maccabees. Is there something in your life that you want to improve or to which you want to rededicate yourself this season to God? And that's certainly something to, to contemplate and to really think about, you know, of, of us rededicating ourselves to God as well. But is there like a service or, or anything else that you want to, to rededicate? Or, or dedicate yourself to, to doing in service of God as well. And Hanukkah celebrates the miracle of a small jug of oil lasting for eight days. As you light your menorah, ask this question, what miraculous events, large or small, do you wish to celebrate this year that God's done in your life? Because he's always doing miracles. He is the God of miracles. He's the God of all possibilities. So those are just two questions to kind of ponder on. I'm, I'm sure we could come up with more, but um, as I said, I don't want to make this like a super duper long. We could actually go into discussing the dreidels, the, you know, all the other things that go, go on. But I think it's really important because there's a lot of people that really don't understand Hanukkah at all and what it represents. And it, it really does represent quite a bit. Um, and to just get a basic history um, is really important. And I hope this enlightens those that don't celebrate Hanukkah that you might want to consider looking into it because it's a preservation of our, our, our uh, faith to God as well. Uh, we have the Torah in our Bible and it was a preservation of, you know, uh, of the Torah, which was coming under attack and, and, and a way of life. Um, so we certainly don't want our way of life to be infringed upon either. And, and the Torah is part of our Bible. So we believe the same, we, we believe, um, you know, in the same God. And if you look at what was going on, um, it, it is very, very, it was very pivotal in, in the history, in the Jewish history. 
And yes, it is celebrated by Messianic Jews. Again, like I said, um, Jesus celebrated it. So it's not something that is just to Orthodox Jews. It's not, you know, it's, it's actually Messianics also practice it as well. So um, with that, I'm going to end part two and come back with part three because I want to do an altar call and I'm going to wrap this up then and then I need to go like the menorah. <laughs>